Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial and it's another Team Yankee subject courtesy of Battlefront who sent me through this French Gazelle helicopter for an early peek and chance to get a tutorial up for you guys before the release. Now I don't paint many helicopters folks. I have painted Hueys before for Vietnam but certainly not something I paint on a regular basis. So you can join me as I take on the challenges of painting this kind of kit, something very different from something that I have experience of. There's now a dedicated Team Yankee playlist on the channel folks. I've got a few tutorials on there already and I will be adding more as time goes by so don't forget to check that out if you want to get some inspiration for other Team Yankee subjects. The most challenging aspect of this kit folks is the windows, there's just so much of them, they're so big and so dominant and whilst you can just paint them as dark or light areas I've experimented with an approach which shows depth, you know interior depth and having completed this project I'm sure I could refine this further so that may well be the subject of future videos. Anyway folks, let's get started and we'll begin with assembly. Let's begin by looking at assembly. It's a new kit folks so it's worthwhile considering how to put it together and any issues there might be. Now first of all I've got a hobby knife, now you notice that's quite blunt, I use a blunt hobby knife. It actually saves your fingers and the plastic and proper snippers folks, modelling snippers that can get into the sprue you know and working around all these small parts and also give you much cleaner cuts as well when you're taking the pieces off. Now everything you need for this kit is on one sprue. There are a couple of options you know for the weapons but we'll be using the toe version here and then glue for the strength work is going to be the standard glue and for any particular difficult bits I've got the thin glue if required and then of course there is the important instructions and you can see the toe components we will be following there. Now when you're making a new kit for the first time I recommend that you do some dry fitting just to make sure everything's coming together especially the larger components which may connect to several pieces and may leave gaps and you may have to squeeze it one way or another. I found this gazelle went together very very well. It, it, it will just clip together and stay together for instance as part of the dry fitting process. The only area that I had to add just a little bit of thin glue just to get a tight tight fit was on the very very end of the plane for the tail rotor. There is one question you might want to consider at the assembly stage is am I going to put the rotors on before painting or after painting? Putting them on before painting has certain conveniences but also inconveniences because they can get in the way when you're trying to airbrush or paint with an ordinary brush. You, know, you can be striking against it as you're moving the brush around but having them on there is also convenient because it makes holding them and painting them easier. So you may have your own thoughts on that folks but certainly worth considering. So the kit is assembled. We have left it to dry, you know we don't want the parts moving around as we are airbrushing. We're now ready to start the painting process and I'm going to be using Vallejo paint for this. I'm going to be using black grey, flat earth and medium olive. You can see here I am applying the flat earth over the black grey. I sprayed the black grey coat on first, I don't want to be spraying the dark colour over any lighter colours because of the risk of overspray. If you saw the recent tutorial on the Leclerc you would see me using masking to create the camel pattern and you can do that here but in this video I want to show you freehand spraying to get a similar outcome. As I'm working I regularly refer back to the box as an easy source for the camel patterns that I'm looking to recreate. Spraying a set camel pattern, you know, to match a reference 
can be quite tricky. You know, these are very small miniatures, so it's quite hard to get things perfect. So I recommend that any paint you have left in your airbrush cup, you decant into a mixing jar and keep it there until you have finished the process. Because we're going to be able to very quickly therefore go back and do any little tweaks that we need. And I should point out that I'm using a very, very basic airbrush here, but one that works very well. It's a double action, press down for air, pull back for paint. This airbrush might set you back about 20 to 30 pounds, or you might just get it as part of an airbrush and a compressor package. Don't be put off trying airbrushing because you think it might be too expensive, folks. It doesn't have to be. When you see the results of this cheap airbrush here, Hopefully that will give you the confidence to give it a go. Now on to the final colour which is going to be the olive green. So I've got my brown on top of the undercoat, if, if you imagine it as that, of the black grey. Now as I'm working through here, I'm going to try and control the overspray as much as possible, which means not having too much paint coming out and not having the paint coming out with too much air. So I can control the shapes but it's not going to be perfect folks but remember I have decanted the paint that I've mixed previously so that I can go back and do any little tweaks I may need to just especially the brown just work the brown a little bit more so that any green that I sprayed over it can be tidied up and I'll get the distinctive shapes that I'm after and here I'm just working some of these brown shapes just a little bit more and then the black grey. After I've completed the airbrushing, I will be given it a thin coat of gloss, not too heavy folks. Gloss varnish in particular will darken down your paints, it acts as a filter. So don't go too heavy here, we just want to get a nice smooth surface for the next stage, which is going to be the wash. For the wash, I'm going to be using this acrylic product here, this is MIG Ammo dark wash. This acts very much in the same way as an enamel product and normally enamel products are used because of their low surface tension and therefore their better flow qualities which will allow us to highlight panel lines and raised and recessed features. The paint just flows around the areas that we want therefore given a brighter finish because we're only going to have the shade where we want the shade to lie. As you can see on the palette here, I can thin and work this product, because it's acrylic, with water. There's no need to be using thinners and I find that's a much more relaxed way of working rather than using oil-based washes. Here you can see me applying the pin wash and you can see how easy and straightforward it is. Do not overload your brush, just basically make the brush wet, you know, that's the best way of describing it, and the paint will just flow off the brush into recesses, along features, around raised features and so on, and if any paint has strayed onto the flat areas, well just take your brush and make sure it's just damp, not wet, because you don't want to flood the surface, you just want it to be damp, and draw off the excess. The result will be a very very fine and controlled shade which will help create contrast especially when we then add highlights to panel edges. The gloss varnish helps in this process because it improves the flow over the surface. If the surface is matte then the paint will want to bite into it and therefore it won't draw down into recesses or around the features quite so easily and it won't lift off quite so easily at the tidying process. Apologies I've gone off camera there folks, but it's important to see that this process requires a bit of patience just to make sure you're applying the same care and attention across the whole surface. So don't try to rush things folks. It's not a big kit, so it's quite easy to work with, but just be patient and work through accurately. And here you can see the finished product folks. Very well defined shaped, very well defined panels and features are really going to catch the eye but will not darken down the colours folks. The overall finish will still be as bright as we intended. 
Next up is the highlighting and we're going to be following an edge highlighting process here folks. As you can see we'll be highlighting the external edges of any features but also lots and lots of what I might call internal panel lines. Now that's the lines that we are defining the shape of the fuselage with. We've already put shade directly into those recesses and now we're going to use the flat of the brush to very carefully with just a little bit of paint create a highlight and then that highlight beside the shade creates contrast and really boosts the shape and really helps it stand out on the tabletop. The colour I'm using here is green grey and I'm going to use it across all of the three camouflage colours. I'm not going to try and highlight each colour individually. That just confuses the eye. You want to see the highlight going around the panel line. You don't want to see broken highlights where you're changing from colour to colour. I will take a different approach on the crew compartment but we'll come to that later after I've painted the windows. The highlighting process also requires patience just as with the wash process but the results are worth it folks because as I said before you'll get a really nicely defined shape and keep a really bright finish. Now for the rotors and the engine, at least the metallic parts, I am taking a non-metallic metal approach, a very basic one folks, but I just don't like using metallic paints. I've just gone off them completely and I like to try and just keep it simple but keep it non-metallic metal. After applying a coat of London Grey, I'm now using Deck Tan as a highlight and just try to put small lines on it. I've actually gone a bit messy here because I've used the wrong brush folks, but I tidied that up later. You can always go back and do a tidy up folks if things don't work well, remember. Next is either what you might call a heavy glaze or a thin wash of a blue colour for a bit of a metallic tinge. And that is going to be, in my case, Luftwaffe uniform. But folks, you can of course just paint this with a bright metallic colour, silver for instance, and give it a wash and then a bit of an edge highlight. And after that wash has been applied, just a couple of spots of white paint folks for really prominent sort of glints of the metallic edges. For the rotor blades, I recommend dark grey as your base colour. And then just feather the edges with two layers of it's very very soft highlight it's almost like a glaze that i'm doing here folks certainly on the first highlight which i would recommend to be dark gray and just a thin edge to that and then an even thinner edge almost like an edge highlight of london gray and just work that thin paint once again but not so thin that it's flowing across the surface and work it until you've got a satisfyingly bright edge but not one that is too strong. Because we're using paint that's slightly wet, it's going to have a slightly feathered edge to it. I've painted the missile pods on the side with a coat of olive brown. That's the shade colour. I'm then going to layer on a coat of olive drab. For a highlight, I'm going to use German Camel Beige. Just very small amounts here, folks. Thin lines across the ends of the toes and a bit of a broken line across the high point of the tubes just to help create a bit of shape there. Now for the big challenge. The big challenge for someone who's used to painting tanks or vehicles. And the vehicles may have little windscreens but certainly nothing like you see here on the crew compartment for the Gazelle. My aim here is just to create areas of light and areas of dark to suggest internal shapes and to suggest light coming through from the opposite quarters, the opposite sides of the glass canopies. So I've started with a coat of London Grey and then I have used some dark rubber. Well, you could go darker here if you wanted folks maybe to dark grey and I have sort of painted the, the bottom areas of all of the 
the windows with the exception of some of the really small windows on the side. So the idea here is to show control panels across the front and then on the side to show the seats and where the pilots would be and also to a degree as well on the front a bit of shade in the centre of the canopies to show where the pilots would sit. Nothing too defined though folks. Next up I'm going to start applying the lighter colours here. Now because this is going to be a lot of feathering and soft edges I'm starting by applying glazes across the surface and I'm going to be using deck tan for this. Where I want the brightest areas showing through, I'll build that glaze up through subsequent layers of very controlled washes and in some cases just softly feathered paint. I'm really just feeling my way through this folks. The only thing I've got in my mind is I've got dark areas where crew and equipment would be and then looking at pictures online, looking through the cockpit um, I can see where the bright areas are and that's where I'm trying to apply this deck tan. And you can see here, especially on the larger frontal areas, you can push the, the glaze around a bit to get a bit of a sort of reflected light look to the surface. Whilst I'm not using any myself, you could use drying retarders with your paint here to help you work it for a bit more time to help create that shimmery look. Here I want to represent light coming through above the level of the pilot and all the various control panels. And I'm taking care to make sure the light, the shimmering, the reflections is joining up between the side and the front. And all the time the paint is getting applied really quite wet and I'm going to feather it as much as is needed to give it nice soft edges. Now I want the edges of the glass to be quite bright. I just think it will quite literally frame it better. So I'm using the deck tan and painting it straight in very carefully, very thin lines into where it's in contact with the surrounding window frames. Next up it's some white for some more distinct reflections, bright spots and there I'm going to be accentuating some of the deck tan and other places I'm just going to be painting some very thin white lines across the curve of the windows. As I said I'm feeling my way through this, I'm not sure what I'm doing but now having done what I think is an okay job in the windows it's a real bravery test time. Using German grey I am going to paint a reflection of the rotors on the front and also on the side. I'm going to immediately start feathering the edge of it so it's nice and soft and not too strong but with a nice solid core to it. Now at this point I'm also adding a really bright spot on the front of the canopy just to add to the reflectiveness. You can see me applying the paint wet and feathering it out so it's going to have a nice bright core and a soft surround and we can accentuate that with a little dot of white right in the middle. Here I'm just tidying up the reflection on the side windows. After that it was just a bit of messing about so to speak, adding in a bit more light, a bit more shade as required to get the finished look. Now, now we've got the, the structure in place we can tweak it to get the look that we're after. I don't paint a lot of helicopters folks but I'm sure with practice I could refine this approach and get to the right balance between the dark and the light both in terms of colour choices and how to apply it. Hopefully it can give you some ideas how you can add that just a bit more depth to the interior of your gazelles or other helicopters. So after the glass is finished we need to tidy up the frames and then we'll get the proper shape of the front of the gazelle really start to show. And after I've used the flat earth to tidy up the frames I'm going to highlight them with new wood. I'm not going to use the green grey that I use for the rest of the helicopter because the whole front of it is flat earth so it's okay to use a specific highlight colour for that and I find new wood is a good colour for that purpose. 
Now, the engine components have given them a coat of gloss varnish just to help increase the sheen level of them because they're nicely maintained pieces of aerial special equipment. And for a bit of a burnished look on the exhaust, I'm applying a careful glaze of new wood. New wood once again, folks. Now, after applying a coat of matte varnish to the entire piece, I first of all realised that satin varnish is probably a better choice because this is a plane and not a tank. But in either case, I want the windows to be very glassy and shiny, so I'm going to be using gloss varnish for that. But I'm going to be adding a very small amount of any kind of medium blue in the hope of getting a deep glassy kind of shine to the surface of the windows. And that is going to be the last stage of the painting process, folks. Hope you found it interesting. It certainly was a, an interesting project for myself, something different. So thanks again to Battlefront for sending this on for me to have a look and share some ideas with you. So thank you for watching, folks, as always. Thanks to the subscribers and to you guys that just drop into the channel from time to time to see what we're up to. If you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button, that means we'll definitely see you all on the next one.